In this video, we're going to graph the function y equals 3 minus 6 sine squared of x. And we're going to do this without any technology whatsoever. We're just going to graph this by hand. Now, because it's a trigonometric function, you have a sine x there. Sine x is 2 pi periodic. It'll repeat itself every any length along the x-axis of 2 pi. So we don't have to graph the whole domain. If we can graph from 0 to 2 pi, then that would be sufficient. We know the basic shape, and we could repeat it over and over again if we needed larger than that. So how do you graph something like y equals 3 minus 6 sine squared? Well, graphing a quadratic trigonometric function can be somewhat of a challenge. But with trigonometric identities, we can actually simplify it into just a linear trigonometric function. That is just sines or cosines. Um, and just graphing a sinusoidal wave is much easier to do. So how do we do that? So the first thing I'm going to do is I notice that the coefficients 3 and 6 are both multiples of 3. So I'm going to factor out the 3 and see what I have there. You're going to get 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. And this is where life gets a little bit easier for us here. 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. This makes my trigonometric identity sense start tingling. 1 minus 2 sine squared of x is just half. It, 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 I can apply the double angle identity for cosine right here. 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. This is just cosine of 2x. So we can simplify that very much so. And so then you look at those numbers here, 3. 3 here gives us the amplitude of our sinusoidal wave. Um, it's going to be 3. Great. And then what about this 2? This 2 affects the period, um, for which the period of the cosine wave is going to be 2 pi over 2, which simplifies just to be pi. So we're actually going to graph two cycles of this thing. So one cycle would be from 0 to pi. The other cycle would be from 0 to 2 pi, like so. And since the amplitude is 3, we have to graph all the way up to 3 and all the way down to negative 3. So let's get started here. Cosine starts at its highest point, which here is going to be 3. Then it's also going to end at the high note, which would then, at the end of the period, which would be pi. And then it'll in the exact middle, the midpoint here, it's going to get its lowest point right here. In this case, it would be pi halves. So therefore, then between the max and the minimum, you're going to have an x-intercept. So cosine will have an intercept at pi fourths. It'll have one at 3 pi fourths. And so if we graph this using the typical sinusoidal graph shape, we get a single, a single cycle of graph. You're going to get something like this. And then we're going to repeat this because we agreed we were going to do this towards, uh, we were going to do this towards the 2 pi, the whole 2 pi there. So we get these pictures like this and then graph it one more time. Like so. And so then we get the graph of y equals 3 minus 6 uh, sine squared. Which, again, when you use the right trigonometric identity, it doesn't seem so challenging. And that's the whole point of trigonometric identities. They can simplify what seems to be hard trigonometric expressions, a much easier one. But the hard part is knowing what's the right identity to use in a given spot.